G'day, g'day. How's it going? What do you know? Strike a light. Just interviewed Finn Kelly. Um, someone that I've been wanting to meet for a while. Uh, I'm sure most people, if not everyone, would know of the Wealth Hansers. Um, and he was one of the founders there, along with Sarah. Um, and they have built a very interesting business. I think, you know, they're, they're kind of the, the, trailblazers of the of the millennial style of advice the, the coaching um which is you know essentially what xy advisor has been in search of since its inception which is you know what kind of advice can you give besides or beyond the investment piece and uh we have a really good inf- discussion you know he's um he's definitely done a lot of things um, in, in the financial advice space and, uh, and we cover a lot of it. And, you know, we talk about, <laughs> he actually walked across Spain, which is hilarious because that's kind of like a prompting question that we give all of our, our, our guests as to, you know, give us a, an interesting story and theorize this and he, he's actually done it. So that was, that's literally where the conversation starts. And then, uh, it was a very valuable discussion and uh, one that I hope everyone enjoys. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy. This episode is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Launching nearly 20 years ago, this ASX-listed company is ranked number one for overall platform functionality and user satisfaction by investment trends for the past three years. As the financial advice landscape changes, it's important now more than ever to embrace new technology and enhance the way you do business. With this change comes your chance to innovate, explore new perspectives, and realize new efficiencies. NetWealth is here to support you on this journey by providing you market-leading technology, excellent customer support, and expertise to help you innovate in your business. Visit the NetWealth website to learn more and get the PDS which clients should read before making a decision. Products issued by NetWealth Investments Limited. Finn, how's it going, mate? Amazing. Thanks for having me. No, look, it's great to have you here. Because we've just met prior to this podcast and uh, I was saying that the first time I ever uh, came across the Wealth Enhancers was when I, uh, I, I had this amazing idea. And I was going to give advice to, to millennials. <laughs> Literally the first response I get was, oh, like wealth enhancers. <laughs> we like hearing that. It means our marketing's doing well. <laughs> exactly. Um, but you've, you've, you've lived a, a very interesting life to date. Uh, a really good example of that, I thought, was um, when Amy sends out the invitation to the podcast, she, she says, she gives it, it's a very stock standard example of, you know, tell us something about you've done in your life. Like, for example, I walked across Spain. And then you reply with, you know what, let's go with that. <laughs> so I'm actually interested to see, you know, did you actually, I, obviously you probably haven't walked across Spain, but but what's, this, what's the story? No, I actually have walked oh, across Spain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's quite interesting. It was yesterday was my one year anniversary of starting it. Get out of yes. town. What? Okay, tell me. So um, there's a pilgrimage called the Camino del Santiago, and it's a very long standing spiritual pilgrimage when you're going through some challenging experiences and you just want to get closer to your, your spirit and yeah. to find out what's going on. And it starts actually in France um, at uh, Saint Jean Pierre de Port on the on the eastern side of the Pyrenees, and it grows completely across the other side of Spain. So that was a 810 kilometres walk. Wow. And you start off the first day climbing the Pyrenees, which was an incredible experience. And I was there actually my, with my younger brother, who is four years younger than me. It was the first time we've spent a month together in the same like vicinity since he was seven and I was 11. <laughs> and he was carrying a little bit of extra weight <laughs> that day. And he hadn't, it was a last minute thing, like two weeks before. And um, I called him up saying, I, I need to do this. I was going through a hard time after a breakup with my wife um, and he's like, all right, I'll come and do this. And I never forget like walking up the hill and we're like halfway up and I just look back and he's just looking up at me just going, what have I got myself <laughs> into? Just absolutely broken. <laughs> and at the end of the day, he had like a whole foot full of blisters. He was broken. He was like, all right, this is going to be a journey. But he, tr- he got through it um, and it was an incredible, incredible experience. My God, is it is it the equivalent of uh, you know that Machu Picchu walk? Is it is it that kind of thing? Yeah, it, it actually is, and it's funny you say that because I'm doing that in two weeks' time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing Inca Trail. Yeah, that's the name of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, man, that is super cool. Um, 
Okay, well, well let, let's dive into a couple of things because there's so much, I feel like the, there's a lot to talk about when it, when it comes to you and when it comes to wealth enhancers. And I think every single person that's on our Facebook group would be really aware of wealth enhancers. To me, it's it's been the, the sort of premium brand for X and Y advice for as long as I uh, have been an advisor or, or in this space. And I mean, what you guys did super early on before anyone was even considering it was was an offering to, to yeah, millennials. And man, what, what you guys, I mean, from an outside looking in, it was, you, you, you hold these parties and then, and then there was, um, uh, you know, you were, you were doing, uh, there was, there was some sort of accounting offering in, in there as well. And then obviously, you know, you're spending some time in the States and, um, and there was, I, I, I mean, I saw a national geographic thing with you in it and then, you know, all these things were happening. So there's, I think you've done a remarkable job um, to promote not just your brand as an individual, but also um, your company as well. And I'd love to talk about a lot of this stuff. So where did it start, man? Okay. Super appreciative of those kind comments. It's nice to hear that from other people in the industry. We respect a lot. Yeah. So thank you. So it really began before we even had the concept of millennials. So Sarah and I actually had uh, a private wealth management company and we looked after traditional high net wealth baby boomers. And it was a really great business. And about three years into it, we started seeing more and more of our own like friends starting to reach out and seeing could we provide advice for them. And unfortunately, we couldn't. The traditional advice model was like you had to have $2 million and... Um, it wasn't possible, but we we thought, well, how can we do this? And we've always been of the thought process that um, the more like we can help our generation, then the more impact we can have, like philanthropic, because they're actually going to be like uh, living life with intention, living life by their values. So we started testing it, and it's pretty cool. A couple of our um, longest term members, I think back about how we did this. We just went, all right, let's try a model for them. And uh, one of our really good friends, Andrew Swallow, who was captain of North Melbourne at the time, was like one of our test uh, members. And we've got a couple other people who are still involved in the community. And we just started doing it. And we used the same process we actually had been using on the um, private wealth clients on this concept of goals and values that we we learnt in the GFC that a lot of people lost a lot of money because they didn't actually understand what they were trying to achieve in life and yeah. whether they needed to actually invest to get that. Um, so we, we started there. We never really knew where it was going to go and it's been one of those things which has just been like ticking along in the background but we, we knew that we had to actually build a brand from day one. Um, it's, it's the brand, which is the longevity of the company. It's got to be over the individual. And that's how we've really focused. And we did have a lot of fun. We used to have frat parties. We used to call them frat parties. And <laughs> we'd have like, we were telling stories about this the other day. We had like 200 people come to the party. We had bouncers, red carpet. We had um, drinking games. We had a line out the back. And people just used to love it. Um, but we've definitely evolved since then. We've now like Shame. we're not there. We're <laughs> we're we still have fun, but we're more of a like online virtual company as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, and so talk to me about how you sort of uh, built a, built a different view of financial advice. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> what we actually learned, well, we looked in what, what is it that people really needed, and investment advice and structuring, it's all well and good, but you could set this great plan and then they go away and then a year later they have, haven't actually progressed. And we soon learnt that it was all about the coaching and the behavioural changes in their, their actual um, attitude. So we went, well, we have to be a coaching firm, not an advice firm. And advice is great. It's it's one element. But when you think about someone's coming in at a, as a millennial, often they either, we have sort of three people. They, they come in, they might have 20 grand of debt, or they may have maybe $20,000 sitting in the bank, or they've actually done quite well and they've got 250 grand in the bank, or they might have bought a property. And at that point, no matter how much advice you do, you can't really change their life overnight where mm. people coming in with a few million dollars I always used to be able to go all right do this one bit of advice and you can make a hundred thousand dollars extra but with millennials in those situations you can't 
But by constant behavioral coaching, these little things add up. And like I just did an article about the live from little things, big things grow. And that's what we see with behavioral coaching. Like if you can just go, all right, well, maybe if you're aware of where your money's going, you may spend a little bit differently. If you ha- are more focused about goals, which are in line with your values, you'll be more disciplined. And then making sure that you optimize constantly going, well, you can add an extra $50 into your share portfolio this month. Those things add up dramatically over the year. Yes. And one of our challenges for our new coaches, even though they completely buy into it, until they've seen the results themselves, they actually struggle sometimes to really understand how big it is. And I was actually catching up with one of my coaches in Boulder, Colorado, because he's a cyclocross champion. Um, And he just shared, it was his one year anniversary, and he's like, I've just been looking at some of my annual, I've been doing his like recent like annual checkups. And he's like, they're like improved by like $50,000. And I go, yeah. And imagine that's not on traditional advice, that's just coaching. Yeah, that's super cool, man. So you, you, you get this idea in your head that you wanna, uh, you and Sarah wanted to start a, a different type of advice. Um, it turns into a behavioral coaching and, and and you know different style of advice because of different life stages. What are you doing, or what were you doing, and and, and what have you found that works well in the client acquisition spe- uh, piece? Mm-hmm. So we've. I think the reason why everyone knows our brand is because we've actually focused on building the brand. Mm. So it hasn't been about individuals. It's about being the company and we want to be the go-to company for millennial advice education. Mm. So we've always been very heavy on the advice piece and giving away really great content and making sure that they feel comfortable by the time they actually get to us, that they know what they need. One of our biggest challenges, um, launching this business was that there was no one providing advice to millennials at the time. So yeah. we had to actually create a, create a product, yeah. create an industry, and then create a whole <laughs> educational piece. And I don't recommend that for anyone. <laughs> it's a nightmare. So yes. like we've spent millions of dollars over the years <laughs> yeah. to get into the point where we're at now. And it's funny, like people often talk about competitors because there's a lot of people like popping up now and what yes. you guys are doing and encouraging yes. more and more. Yes. And we're like, finally, like, <laughs> yes, now we can start talking the same language and yeah. educating this this generation, which traditionally have never seeked advice before. Yes. So that's been a really interesting journey for us. So the more we educate, um, make them feel comfortable. Um, we've spoken about the community side of things. So we really see our membership is broken into four parts. So there's the great advice part. Yep. There's the coaching and accountability. There's the financial hygiene, which is like the admin side of it, like making it easier and, and more efficient. Mm. And then the community. And you actually need all four parts to be able to um, build financial wealth. Me, uh, if if I think back to to when I was advising, which is a couple of years now, but uh, one of the definitely the big changes that I saw between, a, say, a, a pre-retiree or a retiree and, and a millennial advice uh, a client was that the the baby boomers were really attracted to stuff, things, acquisition items, assets, cars, toasters, family houses. And the millennial clients were interested in experiences and owning less things that mm-hmm. were, and they were being more mobile. Um, and, but at the same time, it was my responsibility to make sure that their financial future was looked after, even while they were out there um, gaining what they, what their view of, of a better life was. And so a lot of this came down uh, it, it, in my in my findings was uh, to do with cash flow. Did you end up doing much stuff around cash flow? From day one, we did cash flow. So that right. was the missing piece that we saw in the advice industry yep. is we would do so much on the data that the client back then yep. would provide us. We now call our clients members, yes. but they would provide us this information. And then six months, a year down the track, and you're like, why aren't we actually there? It's because they didn't know their real real information. They didn't know where they were spending money. Yes. So we were very early adopters. We actually, when a zero first came out for the counting, we actually um, created our own cash flow modeling on there. And then they launched their personal advisor cash flow off that. And we actually won their award. Um, it was very time expensive and that was another big investment. <laughs> and then it was really exciting when now these companies like MoneySoft have come out and we yeah. it's actually enabling us there. So we see cash flow as the ability to see live information and correct behavior very quickly. Yeah. 
one of the things that we were talking about just before we started the podcast was positive psychology. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think the thing with advisors right now is probably more so than ever before feeling pretty alone with, you know, we've got a lot of the, a lot of top down focus, which is coming, um, from, from legislative and, and, and the Royal Commission from every single angle, whether it's the Productivity Commission or all the Royal Commission or any other bloody commission that's out there. And that it all seems to be focused on uh, financial advice product and financial advisors. And um, while we're very lucky to have the Facebook group, that's not everyone, right? Mm-hmm. Not everyone's on that. And so, uh, and, and you know, <clears throat> one little Facebook group can't do everything as well. And so, uh, one of the things that uh, maybe you can share your experiences, but uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of alone time as an advisor, and um, and w- you know there there is this real positive psychology piece that's out there. What what do you see? A lot of people say you know if you want to be a six if you want to make your client successful, then you have to be successful yourself. If you want to um, you know teach people how to live a better life, you have to spend a lot of time and, and doing that as well and sort of leading. So you so you're being um, you're being on you're being on brand and you're you're not being you know you're not being disingenuous. You're saying hey look here is what it is that I can help you do. I'm I'm an example of that. A financial advice offering is very aspirational. You know, at, at its core, what we're saying is you can live life one way without us or here is a much shinier alternative if you live with us and we'll simply, you know, go through everything that it is that that we do. Um, how is it that do you think advisors can best deal with that uh, that pressure that we seem to be getting from all sides while at the same time, providing that aspirational leadership. Mm-hmm. So I often feel, I say this to my team a lot, that the, <clears throat> the finance industry is not built for the individual consumer. It's built for the finance industry. So a lot of the noise that comes out there, it's not actually relevant to us or our members. So we need to be filtering what's important, obviously stay in touch with it, but is it really relevant? And are you getting yourself distracted? And that's why we've I've sort of stayed away from the industry for a while now because we like we don't want to be hearing some of the language. Now, we know that we have a big pl- part to play in the future of the industry. So you're seeing us, we're getting more involved and it's one of the reasons why we've launched the Wealth Enhanced Coaching Academy. Yes. But it's, it's important to just go, what's actually relevant? And does your consumer really care about some of the changes that are happening in the industry? Or does your, your customer want to be helped and want to live a more intentional and better life? And it's funny you touch on the positive psychology piece. I feel like this is one area where we are still not doing our job as advisors, especially millennials. It's still very focused on growing wealth and like growing your financial assets. What happens if growing your financial assets actually isn't the right thing for that particular person? What happens if it's more about helping them live a life more in touch with their purpose and values or um, actually being able to have the courage to um, take sabbaticals, which depletes their wealth, or to be able to contribute to philanthropic projects. So I want us to be seeing uh, we have the access to them, we have the data, we have their trust, we need to be playing a bigger role there. And it's one of the reasons why right now we're actually transitioning our whole branding to become a financial wellness company because we've identified that through chatting to our members that what we're actually providing isn't what we're selling and what we're selling to them is still like build your wealth financial advice. What they're telling us is, yeah, it's really hard to describe, but you, you make us feel happier. You, we, we live a more intentional life because of you. We are less stressed. Um, our relationships improved. Um, these are the type of things that we're doing. And they, they're they like, we want to tell more and more people about this, but we don't know how to describe it. So once again, going back on that marketing hat, we now have to package that up in a way that people can describe it. What's financial wellness? So we see financial um, wellness is seeing that finances are part of everyday health and wellness. And traditionally, when you think of health and wellness, it may have been physical, it may be uh, mental or spiritual. 
But there's been, always been a thing which is like the pink elephant in the room just missing. It's this financial piece. You can be the most zen person, <laughs> but then if your finances blow up, it's you're not in a great place. <laughs> or you can um, be really healthy, but then the, um, by eating really good food and great nutrition and working out, but then your finances are causing this stress on you. Um, and there's evidence now, like that the like the weight of financial stress. You like you can improve it by taking a constant Tylenol or day long, but that means you're, you're counteracting something. So we're saying pull in the financial piece and money is at the intersection of everything we do in life now, unfortunately. Like um, it's it's a great thing, but it's also a sad thing. So we're going, well, let's, let's not avoid it now. Let's pull it all together. And our role now as a coach is going to be saying, well, best practice would be to allocate this sort of amounts of money to maybe your health, physical, mental areas, um, you think you want to actually acquire more financial assets or earn more income, you don't. <laughs> um, it's not going to improve your happiness at all. And from someone myself who's built up a lot of financial assets um, and then actually gone into my most unhappy place in my life, I can, mm. I'm a good testament of that. Yeah, it's um, – yeah, money – the old adage is more money doesn't make you happier – um, I, I would often back up with, but better money management does. Yeah, and um, and and that's a really cool thing, man. Like the, and and I actually want to go even further into that because I know, uh, for example, we've we've touched base because wealth enhancers have created a, a you know a, a how advisors can become coaches and and a, and we'll get into that. Um, but I think it's it's a topic that. XY advisor has been rummaging around in for years. We know, everyone knows that it's what you do besides the investments that matter. Mm -hmm. But we don't, we, we, we've really been trying to get as many minds as possible, great minds to from everyone's perspective to try and come in and teach the community what it is that a, a better advice offering looks like. Um, considering you were the dude that originally put it all together all those years ago, uh, as far as a, a, an X and Y uh, client base is concerned, I would love to hear what you think um, the difference between an advisor and a coach is in 2018. So the difference between an advisor and a coach is an advisor is a lot about us and our knowledge and expertise and then using that to help them in a almost a transactional um, situation where it's like, here is your situation, here's my knowledge, and I'm going to prove it in that particular way. And you're, you're staying away from the actual core, like important areas of their life, which is like their purpose, their values, um, and they're really like their real goals. It's just on what they're saying. A coach is about making them more high performing and becoming the best version of themselves um, and s using a lot of techniques and strategies to um, almost optimize them. And I think a lot of people are now saying that they're financial coaches, but they're still just reverting back to the financial advice. And it, you need to be able to have the ability to decipher, decipher when is it an advice moment or when is it a coaching moment. And the way we say it is in the team is the advice part of it is happening in the background all the time. Like it's just there's constant advice. We're looking at the numbers and we're optimizing. The coaching is in the like the face-to-face -face sessions, which we do over video, um, where you're interacting and you're actually picking up on them as humans. And often the coaching session will identify that the advice that you thought was the best thing for them is actually the worst thing for them. Damn, man. What do you <laughs> – you're going to have to give me more. Like what do you mean by that last sentence? So I always say like when people will go, oh, what can I do with my finances? If you provide me the numbers, I can give you an amazing strategy. But that strategy, which may be telling you, well, buy this property, um, keep earning this income for this amount of time, doesn't even t take into account what's like important to them or their health side of things or their spiritual desires. And I feel like this is why the midlife crisis happens because we've gone on this path, been guided, what we think society is telling us to, or maybe we've been getting advice, but it's been misaligned with our spirit. Um, mm. And it's the coach to be able to identify 
um, by getting to really know that person, yeah, this advice isn't the actually right thing for you. Right now, you should not be buying that property. Like you need you need space to be able to decide whether you want to go on a sabbatical or to change roles. Um, and you think you want that, I don't know, that materialist object, you actually don't. So yeah. it's it, that's the challenging role. And it takes time to be able to learn when to be able to do that and also to have the conviction um, to be able to call out a member in that situation. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing, isn't it, when you're um, when you're pushing back against people who have sometimes people have really um, focused life goals. Like a lot of people don't, but then uh, some people do, and then they're really focused, and then they're really focused on money. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least I've noticed. And so I remember uh, giving advice to a couple of younger clients that had gone off and built a career, and then they'd gone back and done medicine, and then they were just about to start receiving a salary. And, you know, they wanted this car and they wanted this house. And and I said, um, you went from a a decent income and then you really dropped down and now you're preparing yourself for for a decent income again. I said, but look at the growth that you're expected to see your income make over the next sort of three, four, five years. You know, you've you've got actually a pretty steep trajectory in in med. I said, uh, why would you... Uh, burden yourself with you know these assets and these loans just when you're you're finally finished mm-hmm. what it is that it, it, it that you want to do you know you've just spent four years in in stuck with your head stuck in in the books um, the answer isn't right now getting all of the materialistic stuff the answer is right now you know what hire a, a beach house yeah you know for for for, for twelve months because. The, the quote-unquote lost money that, that you will lose, again, quote-unquote, by, by renting, um, you, you're going to make back a million times with, with your increased salary that's in a couple of years. So if you just wait sort of two or three years, your ability to pay back a loan is massively increased and you, you're not under pressure coming from four years of pressure. So you go, four years of pressure, why would you go into another four years of pressure? Just chill for, you know, you, you, you're going to be working as a doctor. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of going to be stressed enough. And, um, and yeah, I can sit here happily and say that uh, he sends me, you know, every couple of months, even, even still now, every couple of months, he just takes a picture from his balcony. That he's, he's living on the beach uh, on the central coast. It's so good, man. And, and it's stuff like that. I've, I've got clients or old clients that live all over the world now. And, and it was, uh, that kind of advice, you know, it's it's amazing to hear. And but I was still doing it without a codified way, you know. Like I, I, I kind of created a framework, but even in the last couple of years, it's really taken another step. And I, I fear, uh, not fear, feel that now with the royal commission coming in, it, 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 this type of stuff is becoming louder and louder oh, and yeah. louder. Um. This is actually, the Royal Commission is amazing for our generation of advisors. Like this is the opportunity. This is shaking out the old way of doing things. And we can actually start going, well, this is the way we've always wanted to be able to provide our advice and coaching services. Let's actually go do it. And the consumer is actually wanting this as well, which is more and more exciting. That's a really good point. What what do you say to the people that just want to give up their license altogether and just do the behavior stuff? It's, it's really interesting. Um, I've been looking at it more and more, and it's something because we're considering going into U- US, into America, and I was like, maybe that's how we actually approach the American market to start with. Don't, don't advise on the investment side of things. I think it's a relevant, relevant approach and definitely merit. And then potentially you could just partner with robo-advisors and stuff like that where you could actually get the outcome that you need for your members anyway. You heard of LearnVest? Yeah, I have. A huge company that yeah. sold for hundred, you know, from memory, hundred and twenty million. Yeah, and that was that was a as a young uh, female who was a psychology student, I believe, and, and yep. just built um, the beginnings of, of what we're talking about uh, many years ago, and it's already it's already gone on to sell. I, I absolutely think that there is a massive space to to play here, to play in here. Um, it, it's swapping topics. Just ever slightly, but it really interests me. How the hell did you end up on National Geographic? 
<laughs> sort of random story. So um, I got an email one night and I actually thought it was one of those spam e- emails. It was like, it's from Nat Geo. We're doing a, a documentary series on um, benefactors from particular countries who are going into underprivileged communities, going undercover and helping them out with a project and also doing it with all their own money. And we've been watching you for a while and we're wondering whether you'd be interested in doing this and going through the process as the Australian representative. So I nearly didn't respond and then I was like, okay. And I went through the process and um, we just sold a business at that point um, and we'd already been talking about what we would do philanthropically and it was an incredible experience. I went into Bulgaria. I got involved with the Roma community and spent a few weeks there, got undercover and um, went on an incredible journey with them and it was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Man, that's super cool. So you were the Aussie the Aussie yeah. representation. Yeah. My God, that is phenomenal. What business did you sell? Uh, our private client business, which was, it's funny. So people think Wealth Enhancers has been around longer than it actually was, but that <laughs> right. was, we actually called that in our other business. And then we spun that out to be WE Private. And oh, yes. then we launched Wealth Enhancers in the modern day form. So it was just one of those ones we were like, we'd already been sort of communicating with our brand and we felt like when we launched Wealth Enhancers that Wealth Enhancers was already, the branding was more aligned to the current format of Wealth Enhancers. So we just spun out the other name. Um, So obviously the the older clients didn't want to come to the frat parties. Uh, They actually did, which is quite funny. (laughs) And we used to integrate it really well. They'd like it. Um, But yeah, we just went, let's keep Wealth Enhancers, it seems like the right name. What did you, because obviously it's a phenomenal name, and what what did you go through um, to get that name? What, What was the process? Uh, like typical Sarah and my fashion, we went, all right, let's sit down. We've got five minutes. Let's bang it out. And we just like, I remember we're sitting uh, at a dad's office actually at the time and we're just like banging out names and we went, yep, done. That's it. Whoa. And, and the funny thing is when we first got our first logo, um, it, it was a orange circle and it had WE in it. And then it had wealth enhancers next to it. And we said one, we always thought one day we'll just be we. And here I am sitting in my we t-shirt yeah, man. Um, and everyone just knows it as we now, which is really cool. Yeah. And so as you, as you move more into this uh, financial wellness, mm-hmm. does that, does that change, does that, what, what does that change to your branding? Does it, cause obviously your dot community, which mm-hmm. is, you know, which is pretty mad, yep. which is pretty cool, which I don't know if I like that anymore. We're actually, probably we've just got dot com. We oh. found a way to buy it. It was one of those ones. Sometimes you're doing business, you're like, "Oh, this is a great idea," <laughs> and it was cool. But it's actually been pretty annoying. Like, still, some places don't accept dot community when you're typing them in. No, so we we love it because yes. it talks about what we are. Yeah. Um, but now we're like, all right, maybe we just go back to just dot to com. the com. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, but we might have both. I'm not fully sure. <laughs> <laughs> but does that does that change anything as you as you walk into this? As so is there going to be a rebrand again or is what's happening? Yeah, so we're actually launching a new website in like November 17th or something. So wow. quite soon. Yeah. And you'll see that, yeah, there's new colors. It's uh, um, more aligned with the wellness sort of industry. And you'll just see a change in the content that we're coming through. And who knows about the future models? We're still yes. trying to work that out. The core offering will be the same, yes. um, but we may start doing... Uh, more things like individual courses for the individual consumer. Yes. Um, we've got WeTV. We're actually I'm h- here in two days' time filming a new season of WeTV with Beck. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it's it's fun. We're just going to produce really, really great, valuable content. Awesome, man. And so uh, w- when we talk about the wellness industry as a whole, does that mean uh, retreats like yoga is this where we're headed? So I don't think that's where we're going to be focused on. Like the okay. retreat business is, we've done a lot of retreats. I actually re- uh, facilitate a lot of YPO and EO retreats, which are like senior mm. entrepreneur retreats. They're hard work um, and they're not that profitable, but it may be an element of part of our marketing experience. So um, we may do like a couple each year where you get to be part of what we do. And so if you're moving, I'll one of the best 
things that I see about this coaching element is not only is it going to be more applicable to more Australians, right? So that's one of the things that advisors, we've been racking our brains over Mm -hmm. for, for seems like millennia in order to solve, but it's also transferable, right? And so you're, you're seeing an opportunity in the U S um, let's talk about that for a moment. So same name. Yes. Yep. Yep. And then how, how do you take the Finn brand and then plonk it into America? How does that happen? Well, I'm quite lucky because I have a large network through Entrepreneurs Organization and YPO. So I've got a big community there. And it's funny, Americans, like, they love things like this. Like, they're all about fl- how to be more positive and live a more optimistic life and yeah, flourish. So yeah. they've actually been seeing our brand over there because of the work we've been doing over there just in different avenues. And they're like, when are you guys bringing this here? So... It's been more out of demand that we've been thinking about it. Um, and I think the way it would be more positioned is probably maybe more of an online content platform where we're just producing really, really great content. And we might be in that industry trying to reach the masses rather yes. than what we're doing here, which is quite niche. It is crazy when you think about the, the, the sheer scope and size of the American market. Mm-hmm. You, you, anyone, I mean, I sound way too naive here, but essentially if you can get such a small percentage of engagement and take up in the States, you're you're sitting pretty. It's yeah. actually super true. Yeah. Like it's scary. Like we, we go over there because I work with so many entrepreneurs and you find out that there are $350 million business um, by producing just hog farms, like just the, the buildings for the hogs to, to sleep in at night. Every day I find out, wow, so you just did one thing right and then you replicate it in a thousand cities across <laughs> America. There's, there's just more opportunity. But yeah. it is, it's also a tough market as well. In Australia, it's quite easy to get known very quickly and there's a lot of trust there in, our, in um, the brand as well. I have noticed because I went to uh, FinCon a few years ago that – Simply by opening your mouth, you you get a, a crazy reaction. And I remember signing up for FinCon and I said, uh, you know, I'm just registering here. And, and they said, oh, can you say that again? Oh, yeah. and, and I said, uh, <laughs> just I'm registering. They're like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't stop either. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But, I mean, so with all that in mind, could is there a way, is, 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 do you think you could achieve cut through? I don't know if we need to achieve massive cut through. I don't think we need to be the biggest, but I yep. definitely believe we can have success. And it might be the Wealth Enhancers Coaching Academy, which enables us to actually have cut through first. Yes. So go over there. Like we, th- we think we have advisors. Like mm. there's more advisors in Wells Fargo than they have, in, like we have in the whole of Australia. Wow. So I've... The reason why we launched the Coaching Academy originally was we're very focused on our purpose, which is to enable millennials to become more financially free driven by their goals and values. And we're going through this process of becoming a teal organization, which is um, the next next like business management strategy for like um, businesses. And it's all about built on three concepts, which is evolutionary purpose, a concept of wholeness, and then self-managing teams. And it's basically about that there's no hierarchy, um, you're driven by a purpose and the company just keeps on growing over any individual. And we're looking at our purpose and we're doing really great things, but we can only have so much impact on our own. We're not, what about all one, all the people that we can't reach with our direct demographic and also all the great advisors out there who want to be working with millennials, but they just haven't really created um, a, a great pr- a offering for them or they haven't been trained in this particular area. So we just went, why don't we just share our insights? And rather than seeing anyone as competitors, like literally let's collaborate. Um, and if we can upskill everyone else, and that's good for us anyway, because more people will be talking about needing this help. So that's how we started it, and we just finished our third one literally yesterday, um, third for the year, which was super exciting, and it's evolved just in a year. It's now, um, we now even send our own Wealth Enhancers coaches there because it, they're just constantly upskilling, and we've just seen, like, one coach has been with us for five years, our original coach, she just had her best quarter because she went to the weaker um, last quarter. So it's exciting in that manner. There is... There is, I think, and, and, and it's awesome to see people like you taking on that responsibility because I feel like it is 
collectively the responsibility of financial planners to improve financial advice. Mm -hmm. I, I've just seen so much uh, wasted opportunity and wasted time and uh, from from regulators that have that have picked up that something's wrong and then well they've tried to solve it in a very regulatory way and it and it's just made things worse you know it hasn't actually changed behavior it hasn't actually changed motivation or goals it's just given more hurdles to jump through and my fear is that it's going to be the exact same with with this uh with with this royal commission so uh people like yourself that are doing what they can to to in, improve financial advice in australia um, man, it's awesome. It's awesome Thank to see. Well, we're just like leveraging off you as well. And I think more of us just need to keep collaborating yeah. and just sharing insights yeah. and sharing content. Um, see what people are doing in America. See what people are doing in other countries and, and learn and share and we'll just all increase. And I always like to say like we raise the collective consciousness. And yes. that's exciting. Absolutely. And ultimately, who benefits? The consumer. And that's what's the most important part. Yes. Uh, one of the things I realized many years ago is that advisors aren't really – in fact, advisors aren't competing against each other at all, not even the slightest, if, if, if there's only 20% yep. getting advice. And so uh, I definitely see, uh, you know, I've been formulating this over time, but I see technology being able to handle masses and then there being almost like separate layers or, or, or levels of advice and, and where you've got sort of, you know, real basic advice, but it, it's available to everyone at an insanely cheap price point. Mm -hmm. Like, so for example, map my plan. I'm not sure if you've yeah, heard of it. Yeah, I do them, know it three dollars a month or yep. something you know what i mean so, so for 36 bucks you can get a real basic financial plan it's amazing which is brilliant right and then and then you're gonna have those people that are the young families that just want that sort of really basic traditional advice and then and then uh i think a place that financial planners will live in is this super uh super bespoke you know you <laughs> we are i in my opinion a long time away from an ai that can handle um, really discovering what it is to be human, right? And then help someone do do that human piece well. Yeah, this whole thread of robo-advisors, I'm like, all they're doing is just exactly what platforms have been doing, but just more efficient. <laughs> yeah. they, they're going to be our friend. Um, and we're actually seeing that in, um, in America, some of the studies out there now that there's been – Price deflation potentially on the amount of fees that advisors can charge, but they're actually running the same profit margin because the technology has enabled them to run more efficiently. So I wouldn't see robo advice as a threat. And if anything, you're seeing robo advisors suddenly realizing that, oh, they're not growing as fast as what they thought. And they're now trying because the consumer still wants actual direct human content. Um, yeah. And now they're trying to like work out how do they pivot to not going to the end consumer, but being th direct through advisors. So, we'll st and we're starting to see the first wave of robo advisors actually go under because they're running out of funding. Yes, it's a, it's an interesting thing. I, I mean, I first heard about Betterment and Wealthfront, I guess, back in 2013, it would have been. And, uh, and the whole industry was, oh my God, uh, they can invest ETFs after asking a risk profile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> If you're worried about that, yep. <laughs> what has been your uh, value prop? You I know. know. <laughs> uh, it's interesting to see. And then eventually they end up putting on financial planners, hilariously. I think it's an important part of about planning is about handling adversity. Yeah. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I actually feel like <clears throat> the concept of doing these long-term financial plans and not understanding the individual and guiding them on things that could actually help them live a more intentional life driven by their purpose and values, it's sort of foolish because things like divorce, for example, I've been thinking about this recently. So the, the stats are that we're pretty set up to fail with marriages. Mm. So as an advisor, should we actually be taking a higher role and helping them prepare by saying things like, well, you think you want to combine finances, it's actually better to have it separate and then have certain little accounts um, for yourselves so then there's not a dependency issue or there's fights over finances. Or 
Um, you actually need to be not having therapy once you're in trouble. You need to be having a relationship coach from day one because the odds are that your relationship's probably going to struggle in the future. So I've been thinking about that role as an advisor and coach these days. Like where does our, where does our line stop of where we'll actually impact? We're having a really interesting conversation with our coaches. Um, so we, so many times they talk about nutrition and health with their, um, members, but then is it okay to talk about sex with their members? Like sex is also very important in our lives and it causes a lot of issues. If they can have really good insights and they're in a safe, trusted environment, should they be sharing it as well? So yeah. I think this is where our role is going next. Um, it's taking a, a higher role and being vulnerable and sharing about our experiences. And I know that's been one of the things why people are attracted to Wealth Enhancers because we have an authentic and vulnerable brand. We share what's happened to ourselves and we go, yeah, we got this wrong with ourselves and this is why we changed our philosophy with our members. What about mental health? Do you think, do you think that's something that advisors should talk about and, and what kind of training or, or do you think just over time we're in a good position to be able to handle those conversations? I definitely think mental health is something we need to be talking about because it's it's there and it's often because the way people aren't living life. It's mental health uh, is caused when really there's uh, a misalignment of what's important to them and how they work and how they're actually living. And... Um, and we have insights which could be really valuable. Now, I don't know where our line needs to be blurred, but it's something which we need to be like spending more time talking about. If you see warning signs, like actually pointing it out to them rather than just waiting for the for the challenges to occur. Yeah, because I mean, we're we're at a situation where you know, if a client purchases a, a, a property and they do it without telling you. It, it, we would be insanely, you know, uh, I guess in, maybe even insulted that that we didn't do our job well enough that mm-hmm. they made such a huge financial commitment without even letting us know. So that's that's where we're at now. I wonder if it's I wonder if it, it'll ever get to a point where if a client is in uh, is in you know counselling, why didn't why didn't we know about it beforehand? Why why wasn't that something that that we didn't dig into deep enough so that we could have, you know, helped in hopefully in some way for it not to happen. I really agree. And this is where the cash flow management piece is so interesting because there's now evidence out there that there's um, certain patterns that happen in spending before people die, before they commit suicide. So we have that data. So are we not doing our service by looking at this data and actually understanding these triggers? Um, I think Zurich just brought out a really interesting white paper on it, actually, which is which covers some of these topics. So if we see these things, we need to be able to go, all right, warning bells, let's have these conversations and actually have professionals. Because there is a line as a coach where you've gone to an area where we're quite broad, but then certain times you need to actually go get specialists involved. And it may be like, all right, warning bell, here's our direct person to speak about um, for co- for psychological help. Yeah, I've never heard that before, but it makes perfect sense. I remember many years ago, there was an issue with uh, uh, some supermarket figuring out that a woman was pregnant yeah. before she did because of the big data, they knew what she was ordering, which freaks me out that how predictable people are. But yeah, right. I guess there would be triggers. Oh, wow. I hadn't even considered that. I mean, is that the next step for the software that we're looking to use? I do. And there's other ways you can do it as well. So we've always seen like when we had like we've got a number of AFL players uh, working with us and we could tell when things were going wrong in their like football career because there would suddenly be big clothes spending or gambling or blowouts. And we had that information. We'd call up like and just ask them like, what, are you going okay? What's happening? And they're like, oh, I'm thinking I'm getting dropped and you find out these things. So we're already playing that role. Yeah. So it's time to rather than be like scared of it, step into that role and help them because ultimately that's what we're trying to do, isn't it? We're trying to help them uh, live a more flourishing life. Yeah, man. Finn, mate, thank you so much for coming on. Um, if people want to reach out and learn more, how, how's best to contact you? So we're pretty open on our website is really good, wealthenhancers.community. Um, I'm strong on 
well, I'm actually not that strong on Facebook, but I respond to messengers. <laughs> like I use that as my global <laughs> connection. Um, and yeah, we're all over social. And I'd encourage you to like start using our tools for your members as well, like for your clients as well. Like we have free courses. Yeah. Um, we've got WeTV. We've got a lot of content. And we actually use a lot of other advisors' content as well. When we see they've done, written a better article, we just go, here, use this um, yeah. rather than reinventing the wheel. Yeah, that's a really good point. And uh, and for everyone listening, um, the Wealth Enhancers course should be up and running on the xyadvisor.com learning platform. So, mate, thank you for, for coming in. And it, was, it was great for to have a chat. Absolute pleasure. Cheers, Thanks man. so much.